today we're with Mark, our bonsai uh, instructor, and uh, I have brought him a Japanese red pine that is a grafted pine, and it came from Isley's Nursery. And it has a very distinct shape to it, and I wanted to get his opinion about using it as a bonsai or possibly as simply a potted aesthetic uh, prune pine uh, since it's a specialized uh, type of plant. Uh, branches to keep and take away. See how this is. Um, yes. It's a whirl here. There's a whirl back in here. Uh -huh. um, you were thinking this is the front? No, the, the other side. Well, the way I see it would be, if, if this was the front, this branch is unnecessary. It's coming right at us. It blocks. We don't see into the uh -huh. tree. So usually your first branch is going to be to the right or left. It's never to the front, and it's never to the back. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> um, so this is the line I see. So it comes up here, and this is the, the way the tree is going to grow to the right and then come back and then maybe uh, come back this way up in here and so this would be um, maybe your first branch uh, to counter this movement uh -huh. and then we remove some of this and maybe something back there and then this becomes the branch going this way, this one counters it going this way. Mm -hmm. So we'd save that. Um, uh, you see, whorls c uh, create bar branches where the branch is right opposite another branch, like a cross. Mm -hmm. Th that's usually not uh, good in a bonsai or any bonsai having a bar branch. So you have to remove this one, which mm -hmm. we planned on keeping this one. And, and it might be more evident what's happening. Okay. Th this pine um, was grown to be, it must a be a dwarf, yeah. And, and generally, um, that can work. Like, I like to use mugo pines. They're naturally like shrubs. Mm -hmm. uh, but here, um, we're going to have to remove a lot here. Yes. And it's a low graft, which is okay, but um, it, it's because it's a special variety. They can't grow this from seed. It will revert back. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. um, so rather than doing it in a bonsai, would you just thin it out and keep it for the sake of shape and keep it in a regular pot? Uh, well, pines make good container plants. It, it would be fine that way, but to make this become uh, a blown side, we have to do a lot of. I, I just want to make sure. I would have to. I would want to trim it a lot, and sometimes maybe that's why you brought it to me because. It is, it's, it's a complicated piece here. Yes. Uh. This tree wasn't really uh, planted to become a bonsai, probably a landscape uh, plant. And so um, if this was going to be grown as a bonsai when it was very small, um, it would be uh, planted in a way that later you would uh, be able to manipulate the roots better. Like you might clip the root, the main root, to get rid of it. 
so you can get it in a shallow pot eventually. Mm. Mm. Uh, this tree was also grafted, so um, it, it was kind of, could have been grafted to be a bonsai because it was grafted very low down here, so that um, is done well, so it doesn't uh, form a scar that's too visible. Mm. Okay, and then these are just little roots on the surface like this that cuts across all the roots should radiate out from a tree on a mature tree they're holding it up mm -hmm. and so uh, roots that wrap around don't look natural it looks like oh it got caught in the nursery can and you don't want that so a little root like this or one that sticks up like a knee sometimes they're like this you cut it off because it, it's it's not helping your design just like you trim some of the branches off, you are careful which roots you leave and, and train and mm. encourage. So um, it, it's a finer point, but you need that transition between the tree and the ground through the roots. And so uh, the roots add to the look of stability. And, and if a tree um, has a nice root base here, it's more valuable than a tree that only has roots on one side, or it doesn't have that nice spread of roots. So based on what you said, uh, there's a certain number of the roots are going to be exposed in the final product. Yes, uh, exposed roots make the tree look older. Time has worn the soil away, or they've pushed up out of the ground as they get older, or they some roots they call buttress roots because they are helping to buttress the tree. Um, here's a knee root. See how it's mm -hmm. uh, Yes. That, you wouldn't find that in the woods very rarely and not in a bonsai. So you just cut that knee root off. It, it, um, it doesn't help in the design. Whereas if it had a, a very good uh, five or six roots tapering out from the base of the tree, you'd let them be exposed and um, maybe over a two or three year period, expose them more. Uh, okay, so now forward, it has a lot of growth going in the back. So there's obviously too much. Um, I think, um, We don't need all this back movement, so why not uh, take this lowest one off? See, what you're talking about is right in here and mm -hmm. these two. So um, one thing which is a trick is to um, make it look like a dead nub or stub and uh, don't remove the whole thing. Um, that's called a gin. It's like the top of the tree or a branch gets hit by lightning, or insects kill it, or it gets blown, ripped off in a storm. And uh, you have to be careful with it, because it is a, it can become a gimmick, or the, you know, maybe the tree looks too young to have that kind of, damage done to it, but um, it's just a way of uh, 
de-emphasizing. So what I'll do is um, remove the live bark from that tree, that branch, and then just let it um, uh, bleach out with the sun. And sometimes you put bleach, uh, lime sulfur bleach on the wood to preserve it as a fungicide, but also to make it seem more like uh, weather beaten and dead wood gets kind of bleached out up in the mountains. So you know it's it's a secondary trunk or it's not the, the main part of the tree. Uh, and that way we have a, a back branch. And so I'm going to um, de-emphasize it. I don't want it touching this one. And uh, it's just a hint of a branch, so we don't need all this back here. And then here we have to work with these whorls. So um, It's all logical. Like we need, uh, we need branches coming towards us, mm -hmm. not down in this area because they would block. Um, but in this area, um, it's going to look too skinned and flat. So this this should be left as a forward branch. Mm -hmm. It's very congested back here, and we we don't need in any case a back branch. So I'm just going to remove that. And. Uh, then I have to decide, uh, where's the top of the tree going to eventually be? Um, should it keep going this way more and being brought up? Or this is already going upwards. Yeah. Um, but I think you cut some here, right? Um, that's why it's better not to cut too much on the top, but thin out like you were doing in here. Because yes. uh -huh. some of those ranches you know are not, if they're going straight up, they're probably not going to be part of your design. But we uh, can agree that the top is going to I think come so. From here. Yeah. Because that way um, I can make this branch come forward by just removing, visually removing this part. And then uh, it come back that way instead of all oh, keep going this way it'll mm -hmm. a lot of times it's nice if the head of the tree can end up over the base no matter where it goes in here mm -hmm. as long as it the top uh, is in position to the base yeah. that that um, I, so that in in turn if you decide that that may bring this one over here more um, no I um, I, I might want to cover some of this, like we talk about branches coming towards yes. you more. So, um, uh, see, it's, it's yes. less awkward. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Then um, here we can um, start figuring this out here. By, um, I'm going to let this be the front, uh, the branch that comes forward, and this one I'm going to de-emphasize. So we get a nice change in direction. Anytime you can get changes in direction through pruning, that's better than wiring it and making it change. See, um, I'll explain that Chinese-Japanese to you. Uh, the Japanese um, will wire the plant and then bend it to wherever they want and usually you get nice curves that way you can like somebody jumping off a cliff it, it's a it's a nice curve but uh, Chinese enjoy more changes of direction and you get those better by trimming and so you're more involved with the plant in the Chinese way um, you're doing something to the plant, the plant's responding to what you did. 
Whereas when you wrap it with wire, the ch plant has no way of responding except getting cut by the wire as it grows. And uh, it's a more natural process, like the wind blowing twigs off in the winter. In the spring, they grow in different directions. That's how you get those beautiful patterns. And Chinese bonsai is very ramified with different little branches and twigs. It, it's, that takes time. The Japanese way is faster. You wire it and you bend it and then it's kind of set in the next year or two. Whereas the Chinese one, you have to keep growing it out. And uh, so it, it gives a different look. You know, when this tree will kind of have two tops, it'll um, be a lesser top, a smaller one here, and then this one will go up taller. So the tree kind of splits into two. And you could also uh, do this with this branch, and then uh, it'll rise up to the new top and then fall down. So we'll get a nice triangle eventually out of it. Mm. And uh, I, I don't think you have to change the planting angle very much. It, I would um, maybe use a rectangular or Just work the wire between the needles. See, so if it's an oval pot, not in the center, but back to the left a little bit to give more space on this side of the tree. So uh, when you say oval, so should the pot be wider than this base? No, it's red ball in, that's the literal translation. So they're little ball-like pellets and sometimes it's more reddish than this and uh, it's unusual in that it's clay. Clay is very um, nutritious soil. It's just it's too, air is not in there. It's too dense and so by sifting out the small particles you're creating um, a situation with a lot of air going in and out and this clay I do ceramics. When you put clay in water, it immediately turns to slip. It doesn't hold its form or anything. But the Akadama soil can be wet, it can be submerged, and then it drains away, and then if it's a sunny day, in three or four days it's dry again. And it's not turned into a brick or slip. It, it's got some kind of electronic charges in the particles that hold them together. So it's clay, but it